What is up, people? It is me, your guy, Tony P, and this is the Doing Stuff Podcast. How are y'all doing today? Today is going to be a very low vibrational day. It's been a very long and trying week. Luckily, I had already planned this ahead of time. I actually planned on doing more than just this. Actually, we can't do more than just this. Because... The things that I've heard, the things that I've seen, and the what the hell is going on when it comes to Marvel, Marvel and Disney, and my man's uh, what's his name? Um, the X Men showrunner, X Men ninety seven showrunner. There it is, yup. Bo Di Mayo. So apparently, uh, Bo Di Mayo got fired like right before the premiere of X Men '97. Which, uh, by the way, coming on to the coming to the channel very soon, more sooner than later. Uh. We do we're gonna be doing reactions to the to them boys um very 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 soon they're gonna be added to the uh to the old good old lineup because we're running low on content at this point <laughs> let's see x men ninety seven X Men ninety seven has ten episodes and they about thirty thirty minutes forty minutes. One thing that annoys me about Disney Plus, I get, uh, and, and I guess it's a nitpick. Disney Plus will not have a set amount of time for their shows, but ten episodes, roughly thirty minutes apiece. Um, but yeah, um, I heard it was a really good show. I haven't watched it because I knew that I wanted to always do the, do it for the channel. So um, now I'm finally in a position to actually do it. But uh, but yeah, the um, the uh, showrunner got fired for mischievous deeds. Apparently, he was being inappropriate with uh with staffers, and um, he ended up getting fired. And if this is in fact true, then he got what he deserved. And you know, people try to play victim when they do wrong. Um, but I think the suits got it right. This this go around. And why am I not on Instagram, yo? I'm not gonna worry about it too tough, but it's it's supposed to work. It's supposed to be working. And yet it's not. It's all good. But uh what we here for, we are here for that old good old fashioned hot D. So um I got a hold of the audio book. Shout out to Citizen X. Make sure y'all subscribe. Subscribe to my uh my Tony P does stuff page. This is my personal hey, this is my personal um profile. But um Citizen X, they do a lot of visual storytelling. They have visuals, they tell, they tell, they basically read the book and tell the story of the book, um, along with visuals and details and information that kind of help you understand what's going on in the story. So I figured now that season two is done and some of us are interested in waiting another two years to continue the story and then another another two years to get the conclusion because i want to say they have four they, they they're slated to have four seasons so we won't be getting the conclusion until four years from now ain't no telling where i'm gonna be at so i need to know what happened to crispy cole that's what i need to know i need to know he dies a horrible death in front of Allison, and they, I want them to die together. I want one of them to witness the other one die, and then the other one die a horrible death, preferably via dire wolves. <laughs> but um, we ain't got nobody in the chat just yet. But yeah, we uh, we gonna get we gonna get started. We gonna get rolling, man. So 
about to, I'm about to do what I do with my reaction videos, but this isn't a reaction video, so let's get it. <laughs> a century after the Valyrian dragon lords of House Targaryen conquered six of seven Westerosi realms. Mm. The continent was experiencing the final years of a golden age under King Jaehaerys I, which then continued under okay, his well, grandson. Well, okay, okay, okay. This is a, this sh already a lot of information. Can I just... Viserys the... No, okay. Hold on. It's geez. Y'all, y'all coming out with the information quick. Okay. A century after the... Okay. So first off, maybe I need to take the captions off. Oh, wait. Can we go 1080p? Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> okay. Captions are off. All right. So the rise of Valyria, 8,000 to 4,700 BC. Doom of Valyria, 800. Wait, rise? Wow. Okay. So this is a map of this is a map of Westeros and Essos. So what is it based off of? I wonder. So North. That's crazy. It's just called the North. The Isles and the Rivers. The Rock. Castle Rock? It's I thought Castle Rock was on the was on the east side of uh Westeros, but I guess not. Vale is huge. I didn't realize Vale was um so big to reach. Storm drain, storm, storm drain, <laughs> and <Endor. laughs> All right. Valyrian dragon lords of House Targaryen conquered six of seven Westerosi realms. The continent was experiencing the final years. Okay, so Jaehaerys, Jaehaerys of a was, golden um. At the beginning of season one, Jaehaerys was the king that had to decide between Viserys and Rhaenys. And he couldn't decide because he's a little, a little punk. He had the realm vote, which is wild. I <laughs> really? Um, <laughs> sorry, y'all. Um, so yeah, he's the one who had uh was at the very beginning. He died. His sons died before him, so he had to uh he had to let the. The very first vote. King Jaehaerys the First, which then continued under his grandson Viserys the First, who inherited the Iron Throne in 103 AC. While Viserys was not a brilliant, transformative figure like his grandfather, he was mm -mm. a kind, amiable king, well loved by his subjects, continuing most of the policies which led to their years of prosperity. Yet in the matter of succession, Viserys took an uncharacteristically firm and unwavering position, contradicting the carefully considered precedent established by his grandfather in years past. Although the structure of Westerosi society made it function as a feudal monarchy, with local lords maintaining significant power, influence, and armies, the overwhelming might of House Targaryen's dragon which served as enormous flying fire-breathing beasts of mass destruction, meant the king could act as an absolute monarch, changing laws, ignoring precedent, and establishing reforms as he saw fit. Therefore, when Aima Arryn, the wife of Viserys mm -hmm. Targaryen, mm -hmm. gave birth to only one surviving child, the king broke free from the tradition of agnatic primogeniture, which demanded a male inherit the throne to name his daughter Rhaenyra as heir. All this happened in episode one of season one. Her father, Rhaenyra, spent years training to become the first ruling queen of Westeros, growing into a beautiful, charming, clever young girl, beloved by all, and nicknamed the... Yeah, what's up, Mina? We we still on episode... We basically still on episode one of season one of uh, Pops of the Dragon. Come on now, grab your popcorn. We ready. Her realm's delight. After the death of her mother, Aima Arryn, in 105 AC, 
King Viserys invited the most prominent lords of the realm to a lavish ceremony where he formally declared his daughter Rhaenyra heir to the Iron Throne, prompting the nobles in attendance to pledge their unwavering loyalty to the princess. Mm -hmm, Yet despite mm -hmm. this precaution taken to protect his daughter's position, the first seeds of conflict were planted just a year later when Viserys married Alicent Hightower, a highly ambitious young woman who gave him four children in quick succession three boys, Aegon, Aemond, and Darren, as well as a girl, Helena, meaning there were now numerous possible males. Okay, so were they not friends? Was that something that they added in the show? Like, were her, was Allison and Rhaenyra not, like, cool before that? Because actually in that little, in that little illustration, she already, she looked older. She looks older than Allison in this, uh, in this image right here, at least. But he didn't mention anything about them being friends. Oh, hmm. So I wonder. Successors. Yeah, Viserys remained resolute in his decision, making oh, it yeah, clear she's Rhaenyra definitely older would continue than Rhaenyra. to be his heir. On reasonably amicable terms for the first few years of their relationship, Princess Rhaenyra and Queen Alicent grew increasingly hostile as they vied to become the most influential mm. woman in the realm. Nowhere was this division more clear than at the great tourney of 111 AC when Princess Rhaenyra donned a beautiful black gown while Alicent wore one of green, leading the royal court to name their respective factions the Blacks and Greens. Seeing that her husband, the king, was adamant his eldest daughter was heir, unwilling to change his mind, no matter... Hold on, wait. You... <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for showing up. <laughs> you just named though. Shawty guy game. I appreciate you for coming through. And thank you for being on the app so you can comment with us. <laughs> <laughs> Out of her arguments, Allison worked diligently over the years to tarnish Rhaenyra's what kind of game you got, thereby chipping away at her support throughout the realm. Unfortunately for the princess, the unusual circumstances I don't surrounding do, I never her private do. life gave the Greens plenty of ammunition for their attacks. Though Rhaenyra married Laenor Valerion in 114 AC, okay. a seemingly good match from a powerful family of Valyrian blood like the mm -hmm. Targaryens, mm -hmm. rumors abound that her husband preferred the company of men. Oh, so Similar, he really he was gay in the books. circulated about Rhaenyra's activities, with some claiming she lost her virginity to her uncle, Daemon Targaryen, and may Ooh. also have had some sort of relationship with her champion, Sir Crispin Cole, whoa, wait, a knight whoa, of the whoa, king's... Whoa, 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 People actually knew about her and Crispy? Oh, that's great. Oh, wait, or did Allison spread the rumors about her? Oh, that's interesting. Why Crispy Cole look like that, though? That's funny guard madly devoted to the princess until a highly contentious rift of unknown origins formed between them causing him to join the greens as he burned with hatred for the woman he once loved I the rumors know. about her private life then worsened during her marriage oh. to Lainor, <laughs> as she was believed to be sleeping with her new champion Sir Harwin strong. strong a great warrior considered by some as the most physically powerful man in Westeros mm, he real evidence strong. of this affair was seemingly produced when Rhaenyra gave birth to three sons Jacaris, Lucerus, and Joffrey none of whom had the silver white hair violet eyes or delicate features of Lainor instead oh. born with a brown hair brown eyes and pug nose of Harwin Strong Not the pug yet nose. everyone involved oh, vehemently is... denied the accusations leading to arguments fights and increased tensions between blacks and greens even after Rhaenyra moved with her family out of the capital to Dragonstone the rumors and conflict persisted until King Viserys had enough and in 120 AC declared that anyone heard disparaging his grandchildren's lineage would have their tongue removed while also ordering Harwin Strong back to his home of Harrenhal where he later died <laughs> Okay, so what y'all can't do is talk about me and my dad jokes, no wool. <laughs> yeah. That's what y'all can't do. And then you over here agreeing. <laughs> well, no, you 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 with the dad jokes. So yeah, me and that, but nah, you be trying to unfriend me for my dad jokes. Go on somewhere shouting. <laughs> in addition to losing a possible lover, Rhaenyra lost her husband Lenor in that same year, mm. with stories claiming he was killed by a male lover. Having previously agreed to a political union, this time the princess married her uncle Daemon Targaryen, the man she'd loved since her youth. Yet Daemon was a rogue prince, beloved by some but hated by many others, living a life of hedonism and adventure. Experience. What up, Vintage? How's it going, brother? You ain't really missing nothing. We still it. Son. Stop. You ain't missed nothing. We still in season one. Uh. 
Uh, Lenard done went off to be be at Pride and uh, right right uh, right there and uh, and they, uh, Damon just got married. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead back to work, brother, because this is we we going through the entire story. This, um, so yeah, this is definitely gonna be a spoiler for you, brother. I appreciate you for sliding through, though. No. <laughs> <laughs> you, you already know. <laughs> Experiencing such wild extremes that at some points in his life he should have put spoilers in the in the, uh, in the in the title. While at other times he struck out to build his legacy, briefly becoming a king in his own right. When he raised an army and conquered the Stepstone. I right, see you later, man. As a appreciate you for coming. Living through. such an unorthodox lifestyle, one of his most hated enemies was Otto Hightower, the father of Alicent Hightower and Hand of the King, adding yet another another layer of conflict between the Blacks and Greens. Though Viserys saw the terrible rift forming in his family, his conflict-averse, jovial spirit made him unable or unwilling to remedy the situation, aside from ensuring they did not squabble in his presence. As a result, any good he accomplished throughout his reign was entirely overshadowed by the factional division he allowed in his court, which ultimately led to the worst, most devastating civil war in Targaryen history. Events finally came to a head in 129 AC when King Viserys died in his sleep at the age mm. of 52, causing Queen Alicent to call for a meeting of the small council, where she immediately set her plans into motion, completely ignoring the wishes of her deceased husband <laughs> to crown her eldest son as King of West. So they softened, they softened everybody up in the show. So they made it seem like it was a mistake. See, I, see, I've already heard the story, but I, I, I'm, I'm remembering details now. So, so she was much more malicious in the book, which is interesting. But on the show, they try to make it seem like, oh, he said Aegon. I thought he was talking about our son. No, he was talking about Aegon the Conqueror. That's that. That's that. I like. I, I, I would have preferred. I would have preferred that they did it like that because the way that they write in the show, we are like it's it's hard to be on Team Green. Like the way that they have have the show written, like don't like no unless you're trying to be a contrarian, you're not try you're not rooting for the Greens in this show, which probably is going to lead to some real big heartbreak later on because we are like the the vast majority of sane people are on Team Black, but stuff like this. This would have like this would have definitely tipped the scales towards black. Nah, we we well we knew it wasn't well. Mm, she, made, she made it seem like it was a mistake. She made it seem like no, he said hey God, we was talking about our son. We do what that dusty heifer did. <laughs> but in the show, they made it seem like Otto was the one behind all of it. He was the one orchestrating everything, all the deception and all that. And here, she's the one running all of it. Never team gre greed. <laughs> oh, that's a funny slip that works. <laughs> so, Otto Hightower, Allison, Kristen Cole, the Grandmaster Orville. Jasper Wild, Larry Strong, Lyman. Oh, he ain't gonna be here much longer. And Tyler Lannister. So pretty much all the characters that's uh that was there that night as well. Steros. Having spent years ensuring the council was comprised of green supporters, nearly all agreed to pledge themselves to Aegon Targaryen, of save for did. old Lord Beesbury, the master of coin, who refused yep. and accused them of stealing Rhaenyra's crown. Mm -hmm. Accounts differ on what happened next, with some claiming he was arrested and died in a cell, while mm. others say Sir Criston Cole, now the champion of Queen Alicent, immediately slit his throat or threw Ooh. him from a window. In any case, loyal Lord Beesbury became the first casualty in the dents of the dragon in civil war for seven days <laughs> whoa 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. The this thing only last well, well not only but this shit lasted for two years that's cool <laughs> that's why they that's why they're stretching the shit out because it's two years worth of storytelling and you can that's why there's a lot of exposition there's a lot of storytelling there's a lot of setup in, in season two because Season three, season three, they've already said it's gonna be all out war. It's gonna be action, action, action. And you can only do but so much. And you gotta make the money. At the end of the day, you know that HBO is here for the monies. They pay they pay George fifty million dollars to be a part of this thing. So you know they gotta recoup that. 
in blood. The death of Viserys secret so they could remove and replace all their enemies at court. Until finally, the King's Guard Sir Criston Cole crowned Aegon II as King of Westeros, claiming legitimacy mm. through tradition and historical precedent, including the conclusion to the Great Council of 101 AC under King Jaehaerys I, which stated a woman could not inherit the Iron Throne over a male claimant. Born from the machinations of Alicent and Otto Hightower, Aegon Targaryen had no ambition to be king, and when presented with the idea, refused, stating he had no desire to steal his sister's crown. Wow! But Kristen Cole eventually convinced him his family would be killed if Rhaenyra became queen, as she would no doubt seek to eliminate her rivals. Mm. Believing the safety of his family was at stake, Aegon saw no choice but to take the throne and commit himself to the war. Over on Dragonstone, Rhaenyra was pregnant with her sixth child, having given birth to two more sons with Daemon Targaryen, naming them Aegon and Viserys. But when she heard her father was dead and younger brother usurped the throne, her rage was so intense, she went into early labor and lost the child, blaming yep. Aegon the Elder, Alicent, and their supporters for the death. Yep. Calling upon her allies, Rhaenyra was crowned the true queen of Westeros from her Rim's seat on Dragonstone. Delight proudly wearing the crown of her father Viserys and great-grandfather Jaehaerys, as it was stolen from the royal palace by Sir Stephen Darklin, a knight of the King's Guard who abandoned mm. Aegon II, believing she was the rightful queen. Gathering her most loyal supporters, including her husband Daemon Targaryen, her father's cousin Rhaenys Targaryen, the sea snake Lord Corlys Valerion, and her three eldest sons, Rhaenyra held the first meeting of the Black Council, where they went over their strategy for the war. Joffrey a toddler, Seeking what are you doing allies, there? Queen Rhaenyra sent her eldest son Jacaris upon Vermax to the Vale of Arryn in the north, while Lucerys rode Arax to the Stormlands. Hoping to keep them from harm, Rhaenyra sent them only as messengers, forbidding them from engaging in combat. Her husband, however, Daemon Targaryen, flying atop Caraxes, had no such restriction when he flew to the Riverlands. Fortunately for the locals, no violence was necessary, as House Strong surrendered Harrenhal without a fight. Mm -hmm. Winning the support of House Blackwood, Queen Rhaenyra's forces won the Battle of the Burning Mill and Battle of Stonehenge, defeating uh, House Bracken, the, the greatest green supporter in the region. While Daemon completed his conquest of the Riverlands, 15-year-old Jacaris embraced his role as a diplomat, securing alliances with House Aaron of the Vale, as well as several of the most powerful houses in the North, including the Manderleys, Borels, and Sunderlands, before securing the Pact of Ice and Fire with Lord Cregan of House Stark, promising a marriage between the Starks and Targaryens. Mm. Yet while their two northern ventures succeeded, that was episode one the of southern two. mission, led by Lucerys, thought to be the safest of the three, ended in complete disaster making the mistake of assuming Boros Baratheon was with the Blacks because his father was an ardent supporter of Rhaenyra, Lucerys arrived to find Aemond of the Greens negotiating an alliance. Boros informed Lucerys that Aemond offered to marry one of his daughters, and since Rhaenyra's boys were all betrothed, the Blacks could not beat that offer. Still holding a grudge for the loss of his eye, Aemond wanted to attack the boy, but Boros forbid it in his hall. However, once Lucerys flew away, Boros gave permission for Aemond to give chase. Engaging in the dance over Shipbreaker Bay, young Arax was no match for Vagar, and so both Lucerys and his dragon were killed. While Rhaenyra cried and raged over the death of her son, Daemon Targaryen swore vengeance and reached out to his underworld contacts in the capital, arranging for the assassin's blood and cheese to infiltrate the Red Keep using secret tunnels underneath. <laughs> Killing a handmaiden, they captured Alicent, Helena, Jaehaerys, Jahera, and Maelor before forcing the king's wife to choose which of her three children would die. Threatening to rape her daughter and kill them all if she refused, Ooh. Elena reluctantly chose her youngest, Maelor, reasoning that he did not understand what was happening and would not suffer. But the assassins instead cut off the head of her eldest son, Jaehaerys, before fleeing into the night. Blood was soon caught trying to escape the city with the prince's head in a bag, and so... <laughs> so that's another thing that they softened in the, uh, in the books, man. They damn, they said they was going to rape that baby. That's crazy. Yeah, they, yeah, you can't, you can't, you can't, well, ooh, I don't even know if you can say that word on, on, on YouTube or not. I, I probably just officially got demonetized. But um, they said... It, she had to choose that. The first off, they don't have, they didn't have three children. One, Maylor don't exist in the show. Two, they told, they, they had her tell her which one was the boy. She pointed at the, she gave them the boy. And, <laughs> and then that was in front of Allison too. Allison was there. Right? No? No, she wasn't. 
That's 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 was tortured and killed. But she's and the former dancer Miseria, who arranged it all for Damon, were never. Like, I mean, uh, white this word. Powerful act of vengeance then did further damage as Queen Helena grew depressed and that is a unable fact. to look at her son Maelor since she named him to die. The king, meanwhile, felt a drink and rage consumed by hatred. Though Aegon enjoyed the company of many women aside from his wife, their marriage remained amicable until the death of their child when mm. they stopped sleeping together or even communicating at all. Hoping they stopped doing that back way the Blacks, before Sir then. Kristen Cole sent the king's guard, Arik Cargyle, on a mission to infiltrate Dragonstone, posing as his twin brother Eric, who served as queen's guard for Rhaenyra. On a mission of assassination, possibly against the queen or her children, his target was never discovered as he was spotted and exposed by his brother before completing the mission. Engaging in single combat to the death, stories say the brothers killed each other out of nightly duty but died in each other's arms. Mm. While others, like Rhaenyra's jester Mushroom, claim they suffered grievous wounds quickly and cursed each other as traitors. With the Blacks winning allies and striking back with fury against the Greens, the Hand of the King Otto Hightower did his best to strengthen their position, but largely failed in many areas as he was unable to secure an alliance with Dorne, which claimed neutrality, was receiving yep. no reply from his messages to the Ironborn, and could not even secure his own homeland of the Reach, where only the Houses Hightower and Redwine pledged for Aegon, while Houses Costain, Mullendor, Tarly, Rowan, and Grimm sided with Rhaenyra. House Tyrell, seeing their realm divided, declared neutrality. Sending word to Ormond Hightower to destroy the enemy lords of the Reach, Otto next set his sights across the sea to Essos, where the Kingdom of the Three Daughters agreed to ally with Aegon Targaryen in exchange for the Stepstones and trade rights. Yet okay, that's what happened was too with uh, to make an immediate impact, and the corrupt, inefficient Kingdom of the Three Daughters needed time to prepare their forces. Therefore, the king dismissed his grandfather and appointed Kristen Cole as Hand of the King. Far more violent and warlike than his predecessor, Cole implemented an aggressive strategy, beginning by executing all Black Faction prisoners unless they bent the knee to Aegon. Yet only three submitted, while the rest chose to keep their honor in death. Entering into a new phase of the war, Westeros was properly fractured, with the North, Riverlands, and Vale pledged to Rhaenyra, the Westerlands and Stormlands siding with Aegon, the Reach and Crownlands divided, Dorne remaining neutral, and the Iron Islands undeclared. Therefore, Cole first elected to focus on the nearby Crown Lands, which, outside the capital, largely stood with Rhaenyra, sacking Duskendale and beheading its lord. Mm. Cole then moved on to Rook's Rest, but House Staunton had to send for aid, prompting Princess Rhaenys of the Blacks to arrive on her dragon Maelies. Engaging in the Battle of Rook's Rest, Briston Cole attacked the enemy from the ground with scorpions and archers, while King Aegon flew on Sunfire and Prince Aemond upon Vagar. Badly outnumbered, Rhaenys nonetheless put up a valiant struggle, seeing Maelys viciously bite Sunfire's neck, which caused a chaotic melee between all three that sent them mm. crashing to the ground. Suffering a terrible defeat, Rhaenys and her dragon were killed, while Aemond and Vagar emerged unharmed, completing the conquest of Rook's Rest. The king and his dragon, meanwhile, also survived, but were both critically wounded, with Sunfire tearing a wing and Aegon suffering burns and broken bones. The king was so injured, he required months of painful recovery, meat. spending most of his time sedated with milk of the poppy. As Aegon II was incapacitated, his brother Aemon Targaryen was named regent as protector of the realm. A harsh, courageous, and bloody-minded warrior bonded to the oldest, most powerful dragon known to exist, Aemon was prepared to escalate the war and achieve victory at any cost. As Sunfire was unable to fly, a garrison was left to feed and protect him, but this small force could not stand when House Mooton recaptured Rook's Rest and sent their warriors to slay the dragon. Although Sunfire's wound did not heal perfectly, he was recovered enough to defend himself and take flight, escaping further harm. Mm. Devastated by the loss of his beloved wife, Corl I think that's another change from the books as well. I think Sunfire is dead in the show. I think he actually said the Sunfire was actually dead. Um, Aegon said the Sunfire was dead. I thought the Sunfire was just grounded, like basically protecting the Rook's Rest Castle, uh, basically. But nah, I think I, I think after well, I think it was the season finale. He actually mentioned that that she was dead. Why Coral is white? Why? Why? Why y'all do my man like that? Huh? Was he white in the books? I don't like it. Lise Valerion nearly left Rhaenyra's cause, but was convinced to stay when Jacaris named him Hand of the Queen. Though the Blacks had many powerful allies, most were far from the center of the conflict, making it difficult to respond quickly and with adequate force in or near the Crownlands. 
Thus, the death of Rhaenys prompted the queen to send away the younger children of her family, as well as their dragons, for safety, sending Joffrey, Taraxis, and three dragon eggs to the Vale of Arryn alongside Rhaena Targaryen, Daemon's daughter from his first marriage, while Aegon the Younger, Stormcloud, Viserys, and a dragon egg were sent to be fostered by the Prince of Pentos. With his brothers gone, Ooh. the queen's heir, Jacaris Valerion, is going to say straight increasing to responsibilities in the next stage of the war. Knowing that Targaryen men over the years fathered many illegitimate children with small folk and nobility alike, Jacaris thought up a plan to raise more dragon riders by putting out a call to the people of Dragon promising great reward to any who successfully bonded a dragon. All right, so <laughs> Nettles is black. Why why Adam not black? So they they basically took they took away Nettles and they made Adam black. <laughs> Oh, though many failed, were wounded, or even burned alive, some few succeeded, like Hugh Hammer upon Vermithor, Wolf of the White upon Silverwing, Adam of Hall on Sea Smoke, and the girl Nettles riding Sheep Stealer. Adam of Hall and his brother Alan were bastard born children, supposedly fathered by Lenor Valerion, though they were more likely the children of Corlys Valerion. Therefore, when Adam claimed a dragon, Rhaenyra legitimized both brothers, allowing the Lord of Driftmark to name the eldest his heir. With the dragon seeds at their is back, he, the is he actually gonna gained do a that? decisive advantage over the enemy, but soon suffered a catastrophe in the Battle of the Gullet, remembered as one of the bloodiest sea battles in history. At last fulfilling their agreement, the Kingdom of the Three Daughters sent a fleet of 90 ships to break the Valerion Sea Blockade around the capital. But first, they ran into the vessel carrying Rhaenyra's sons to Pentos, able to capture Viserys and his dragon egg, while Aegon fled atop Stormcloud, who was gravely wounded, but nonetheless made it to dragon. Okay, where you make it to? Dragon Stone, insure. Okay, so how are they gonna do that in the show? Because them kids and them dragons is way too small to be able to do that. Like, like them dragons is th them dragons ain't carrying nobody, let alone flying over the sea to Dragon Stone. So I wonder how that's gonna work because. The Triarchy's forces are definitely headed towards the blockade, yes. But uh, if they were... How, and also, if... You see, it's still... It's not making sense logistically. You can see my... Mark, okay. So if they're leaving the veil... Now... You now got to fast. I got to fast. I got to fast forward. But no, if they're leaving the veil and going to Pentos, how did the Triarchy end up running into their boat when it's a straight shot right here to Pentos? Why would they leave the veil and go down here and, and to even get caught? That that's 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 interesting to see. During his rider's safety before dying. The fleet then attacked the Valerion ships at the Gullet, causing Jacaris to lead the dragon seeds into battle, destroying 62 of 90 vessels. The foreign nice. fleet, however, had experience fighting dragons, able to bring down Vermax and kill its rider, Jacaris. Oh, the wait a minute. The show, okay. Come, okay, come on now. Come on now, Mina. Mina. Okay. <laughs> That's a lot of goddamn fast forwarding. That is, uh, I, I see what you're saying now. You know, for this, we can see right here. Wait. Okay. Oh, that's how I make the mouse. Okay. I'm learning things. So we see that it only lasts two years. It's a two-year war. Them babies are still babies, including them dragons. Ain't no way they going to fast forward one of them babies being able to to ride a dragon back to uh, Dragonstone, let alone know how to get back to Dragonstone. Let's talk about that. Like, they babies, and they, they, they've they been in the veil for I don't know how long. Remaining fleet was also able to sack and burn nearby Spice Town and High Tide on Driftmark, eliminating a third of the Valerion fleet, slaughtering their people, and destroying much of Corley's Valerion's wealth. Though the fleet Ooh. sailed back to Essos with much treasure and a valuable war hostage, the overwhelming loss of ships and men caused the Kingdom of the Three Daughters to consider the battle a miserable defeat, leading to a mm. political crisis and their very own civil war. 
Oh. So the Greens struck a devastating blow with the death of Jacaris and sacking of Driftmark. Their allies in Essos were now out of the war, and the Valerian fleet remained in control of the Narrow Knew Sea. He was going to die, though. The Battle of the Gullet was technically a black victory. Now we are spoiling the enemy territory. The blockade of the capital. Distraught Ooh. by the death of yet another son, matters worsened for Rhaenyra during the Battle of the Honeywine in the Reach, when her allies were on the brink of victory against House Hightower, only for Prince Darren, the youngest brother of King Aegon, to fly his dragon to Serion into battle, defeating the Blacks. Targeting Ooh. the river. Okay, so if y'all missed it at the end of the last episode, they, they were showing all the armies and everything um convergent on to each other. Some headed the Heron Hall, some headed here and there, whatever. And there was a group of guys, there was a group of people, and they had a dragon. That was Viser shit. What was the damn what's the damn dragon name? Viserion? Tessarion, Tessarion, and Darren. Darren? I can't remember. Just a lot of damn names to remember. But that was him and his dragon. That is, and a lot of people was like, how does he got another son? Yeah, they have four sons. He got sent back to, he got sent to Old Town because basically he the youngest. So ain't no way he going to be able to do anything, uh, having to do anything political. Besides whoremonger, so they sent him. They sent him and his dragon to Old Town, and apparently my boy's badass because he was able to take out the blacks. Um, where it? Somewhere in the Reach, the Battle of Honeywine. Brink of That's victory against House Hightower, only for Prince Darren, the youngest brother of King Aegon, to fly his dragon to Serion into battle, defeating the blacks. Targeting the Riverlands, the Greens, Aemond and Kristen Cole led an army to Harrenhal, expecting to face Daemon Targaryen. But the okay. fortress was empty as the rogue prince departed, eventually making his way to Maidenpool, where he remained for a time with the dragon seed Nettles, possibly beginning a romantic affair. So, it's understood that Nettle, they're giving Reyna, Darren, uh, Daemon's daughter, Nettle's story. So how they gonna work that out? He already done smashed his niece. He done smashed his mama. Now he gonna smash his daughter too? This this dude is a degenerate. Seeking to join Aemon's host at Harrenhal, House Lannister of the Westerlands led over 8,000 men into their eastern neighbor. Yet the lords of the Riverlands knew their territory you well said. and were committed to victory, <laughs> repeatedly throwing themselves and their warriors at the Lannister army, whittling down enemy forces. Despite House Lannister winning the battle at the Red Fork and battle at Acorn Hall, they lost two commanders and many men along the way, with the Riverlords continually regrouping and renewing their attacks. The last stand defense against the Lannister talking advanced, about when they said there's the another the player in the game. Shore, where the River Ooh, Lords you think they're bringing medals? You think that's the what they're getting that? 2,000 hard-fighting northern warriors, unwilling to wait for the larger northern host to gather, and marched south, seeking a glorious death. In keeping with the tradition of older men, voluntarily leaving their homes to die in the wilderness, thereby ensuring wow. food for their families during harsh winter months. Wow, Thus, that's the winter crazy. Wars were entirely prepared to die, making them possibly the most fearsome devastating fighters in the entire war hmm. engaging in what was alternatively called the fish feed the lannister army was entirely destroyed while the blacks lost two thousand men including two-thirds of the winter wolves who fought with unparalleled ferocity the defeat of the greens in the riverlands then went on to have reverberating effects across the continent leading to many more victories for the blacks like in the westerlands where the destruction of their armies meant the wealthy realm was largely undefended this in turn mm. caused the Red Kraken of House Greyjoy to declare for the Blacks so he could plunder the Westerlands and reach, capturing Case of and Fair Isle, as well as sacking Lannisport. They some damn uh, bottom Rhaenyra feeders, was well, I still swear. Heartbroken by the death of her sons and could hold back her wrath no longer. Organizing Ooh. the invasion of King's Landing, Rhaenyra and her Let's husband go. atop their dragons took the capital in less than a day what? as the Green Armies were on campaign and the garrison was betrayed by the Gold Cloaks, city watchmen loyal to their former commander, Daemon Targaryen. That's what I'm Finally talking set about. Upon her rightful throne, Rhaenyra set about dealing with those captured during the conquest. Unfortunately for the Queen, however, these did not include her still-injured rival, Aegon II, who escaped under the care of Larys Strong. 
Neither did she find the king's children, Jahara and Mabel. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What's up, dirty girl? How you doing? How's it going? <laughs> We're in season three right now, but I just had to... <laughs> Why they do this? Why they do that? <laughs> like, <yeah. laughs> Why they do a little foot like that, man? <laughs> Oh man, that is not right. That is hilarious. Uh yeah, we uh yeah, dirty girl. I, I know you just got in. We we're pretty much is we're pretty much well, we're, we're more than halfway done with the story. Uh we're in season, we're basically in season three right now. Um shit's getting real. Shit's getting real real. Second, who escaped under the care of Laris Strong. Neither did she find the king's children, Jehera and Melor, as they were sent away with the king's guard to supposedly okay. safe locations. Okay. Yet while Jehera arrived at Storm's End without issue, young Melor was attacked and killed by an angry mob at Bitterbridge in the Reach. Oh, that's why the they Rhaenyra never made him a character. Okay, that captive. makes sense. Those remaining in the capital included the increasingly depressed Queen Helena, held captive in her room, but largely Aww. left alone until she finally threw herself from a window, no! ending her own life, possibly after learning about Melor's death. Another valuable no. prisoner was the Queen's longtime hated rival, Alicent Hightower, who was spared physical harm, but nonetheless suffered greatly in captivity, ripping apart her clothes and cursing Rhaenyra when she learned of Helena's death. Others on the Green Council, like Alicent's father, Sir Otto Hightower, and Sir Jasper Wilde, were executed, while Sir Tyland Lannister was given to torturers. At the height of Rainier's reign, when she made plans to finish off her enemies, Allison tried to negotiate with the queen, offering a compromise where the kingdom was split in two. But Rainier refused, explaining that she would have given her enemies positions of honor in her court. But they gave up any chance of generosity when they stole her birthright and killed yep. her son. Yep, yep, Back in yep, the Riverlands, yep. Aemon and Kristen Cole heard about the many green defeats across the continent and left Harrenhal with the Regent going on a one Dragon Rider campaign of terror across the region while the Hand mm. of the King led his army to the Reach. Yet the warriors of these lands were now hardened veterans with burgeoning reputations who alongside their ferocious northern allies were unwilling to let the hated Kingmaker retreat without issue, whittling down his forces through hit-and-run attacks until their final victory in the Butcher's Ball, utterly slaughtering the Greens and killing nice. Mr. Cole. Oh, Having won a great victory in the Reach, Ormond Hightower marched his Green Army West enough, hoping to take back King's Landing. Along the way, they continued to accumulate victories against House Merriweather in the Siege of Longtable and House Caswell in the Burning of Bitterbridge, where Darren and Tessarion sought vengeance for the death of his nephew, Maelor. With their enemies reinforced by men from the Riverlands, the next battle was fought at Tumbleton, where Rhaenyra's forces might have won a great victory if not for the traitorous dragon seeds Hugh Hammer and Ulf the White who no! betrayed the Blacks whoa, whoa, and secured Whoa, 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 what? Not my boy, Hugh! Oh, eh. you ah uh... wait what <laughs> yo Hugh is gonna betray us oh that hurts and what's even funny is that by the time the show comes back I am going to forget about all of this victory for the greens yet this battle was not a total loss for the blacks as That's the winter wolves crazy. of the north fought with such ferocity they carved their way through enemy ranks to kill the commanders ormond and brendan hightower this victory also had other negative consequences for the greens as hugh hammer and ulf the white proved to be honorless vagrants without loyalty to anyone but themselves i didn't that that, that was Landing, a, that was a shocker to me was appalled honestly. by the betrayal of the two dragon seeds and feared the others might turn as well, ordering the arrest of Adam Valerion and Nettles. No! And then these are the two black people on the show. So you're just going to wrongfully arrest the black people on the show? You knew he would by the way he questioned their plan. Mm. I ain't even see that part. But, okay, so no, 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 no. Okay, so no, this is going to be different because... Rainey's Raina. Raina is in the Dragon Sea. She is family. So they not go they're not gonna arrest her. But Adam, 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 Adam might have to go. Adam might might get arrested, man. That's for 
warned by his grandfather. Adam escaped King's Landing on his dragon Sea Smoke, leading to the arrest of Corley's Valerion, which in turn caused his fleet to abandon the Queen. Nettles, meanwhile, was under the protection of her possible lover, Daemon Targaryen, who refused to comply with Rhaenyra's order, instead sending Nettles, flying away to safety, while he dropped all other priorities and spread the word he was waiting for Aemon Targaryen in Harrenhal. The brother of the king then arrived on Vagar and engaged with Daemon upon Paraxis in the Battle of the God's Eye, ending with both dragons locked together. I'm going to go back and watch the last episode, because I missed that part. Just before impact, Daemon ensured his enemy's death by jumping from his seat to launch through the air. Stabbing Eamon through his one eye with the Valyrian steel sword, Dark Sister. Eventually, the remains it. of the dragons Caraxes and Vagar were found, along with the corpse of Aemon Targaryen. Damon's remains, however, were never located, causing some to claim he survived and spent the rest of his days with his beloved Nettle. So Damon don't die. Okay, so okay. So the people who thought about uh Never mind, I'm going to keep that to myself. That, that sounds dumb. Never mind. Finding herself in an increasingly difficult situation, Rhaenyra unknowingly suffered yet another blow when Larry Strong smuggled the recuperating Aegon II onto Dragonstone, where he reunited with his dragon, Sunfire. Gathering all those mm. willing to betray Rhaenyra, they launched a coup and took Dragonstone for the Greens. Princess Bela, the daughter of Daemon, rode no, Moon that's Dancer be against good. the I enemy, can't wait but her to dragon see was killed by Sunfire and she was captured. Aegon II survived the fight, but once again suffered a terrible injury by breaking his legs. With the Queen's fortunes crumbling all around her, rioters were creating chaos in the capital, allowing petty usurpers to rise and find followers. Like when the knight Sir Perkin the Flea declared Tristan Truefire as King of Westeros, claiming his legitimacy as the bastard son of old King Viserys I, and bestowing knighthood on any willing to join them. Whoa. At the same time, a mad prophet called the Shepherd rallied a great mob to storm the Dragon Pit, hoping to slaughter the remaining dragons of House Targaryen, naming them demons, bringing forth the doom of men. Desperate to protect the dragons and fight like his brothers had, young Joffrey Valerion disobeyed orders, mounted his mother's dragon, Syrax, and flew into battle. Unfortunately Sarah. for the prince, Syrax was unaccustomed to his weight and tossed him off mid-flight, sending him falling to his death below. Wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> Yo, ain't no way that's how Joffrey dies. <laughs> There is absolutely no way. <laughs> what? You trying to be big and bad. You steal your mama's dragon like it's her Pontiac <laughs> sitting in the driveway. <laughs> and you get dropped from the sky? But why you have your seatbelt on? Uh, which is why I don't think Sunfire is dead in the show. She plays a part in this. Okay. That's crazy. And it wouldn't t- like, it wouldn't take much for her to go from uh, where she was. At, I can't remember the name of the spot, but it was not far from Dragonstone, which is crazy. Go back. You missed it. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Man, that is the lamest way. His name is Joffrey, so he deserves it. <laughs> Aiming them demons, bringing forth the doom of men. Desperate to protect the dragons and fight like his brothers had, young Joffrey Valerion disobeyed orders, mounted his mother's dragon, Syrax, and flew into battle. Unfortunately for the prince, Syrax was unaccustomed to his weight and tossed him off mid-flight, That's sending him falling crazy. to his death below. That Losing is crazy. her mind with worry, Rhaenyra sought aid in retrieving her son, causing seven courageous knights to voluntarily ride out amidst the chaos, seeking the boy. Remembered as the seven who rode, Sir Giles Ooh. Ironwood, Sir Willem Royce, and Lord Commander Glendon Good were killed, while the Ew. rest successfully found Joffrey's remains and brought them to the queen. Meanwhile, the storming of the dragon pit continued. He said she died when he was talking to, uh, dragons, including yeah, Shrekos, his <laughs> Dreamfire, and I thought Syrax. I did hear him say they in turn he was burned and killed a great many rioters, eventually collapsing the domed roof to crush all beneath. Oh, so with that's, that's lost, why it looks like Rhaenyra that. fled with Aegon the Younger, believing he was her only surviving child, though Viserys still lived as a captive in Essos. 
In the Reach, Sir Hobart Hightower was left in command of the army, which to this point largely succeeded in conquering the territory for the Greens. Yet he was unable to capitalize on their victories, as the two Dragon Seed betrayers were greedy and belligerent, refusing to move until their outrageous demands were met, all the while gathering many dishonorable warriors to their cause. Mm. While Wolf the White wanted Highgarden, the capital of the Reach held by House Tyrell, Hugh Hammer sought an even greater prize, donning a crown of black iron to proclaim himself King of Westeros. When young Daemon Targaryen objected by throwing wine in Hugh's face, he threatened to beat the boy. And when Sir Roger Corn removed the crown, the would-be king nailed three horseshoes to his skull. Oh, Their shit. increasing retinue of men and fearsome dragons, combined with the army's loss of a unifying leader, meant the betrayers were formidable obstacles to progress that could not be easily overcome thing. and would ultimately destroy them. Verbal Unwilling about to allow Hugh Hammer's too. treason, the Caltrop conspiracy formed, wherein a group of nobles sought to assassinate the two betrayers. Yet before they could strike, the Second Battle of Tumbleton erupted when Adam Valerion and Sea Smoke led a Riverland army of 4,000 blacks in a vicious got arrested. attack. What the Unable hell? to live with the shame of being named a traitor, Adam fought with tremendous oh, courage, engaging yeah. in a chaotic melee with the riderless dragons Vermithor and Tessarion, ending with all of them dead or gravely wounded to die mm. soon after. A brutal battle resulting in many nobles and warriors killed. Young Prince Darren Targaryen was the most notable figure among them, meaning that of Alicent Hightower's four children and three grandchildren, only Aegon II and Jahera remained. Winning a great victory oh, wow. for the Blacks, the Greens were unable to count on the Betrayers, as Ulf the White was so drunk he slept through the fighting, That's and Hugh crazy. Hammer was killed by the valiant Green Caltrop, Bull John Roxton, who was then mm. cut down by the False King's men. Mm. Though they lost the battle, many Green nobles survived as the gate to the city remained closed, and the enemy army had no more dragons or siege equipment. Therefore, the Blacks looted the dead and moved on, while the Greens they remained with the shattered still of their army in town. Deciding to rid themselves of Ulf the White, who was quick to name himself king after Hugh's death, the Caltrops gifted him poisoned wine. Good. Yet the betrayer grew suspicious, and so Sir Hobart Hightower willingly sacrificed himself by drinking the wine and praising its taste, thereby giving Ulf the confidence to partake. Both died moments later. No longer finding a friendly welcome in the Crown Lands, most of Rhaenyra's men deserted, and she was forced to sell her crown to buy passage on a ship. What? Among those still loyal to the Queen were the Manderleys of White Harbor, who begged her to retreat north, where she had many allies. But Rhaenyra suffered so much despair and endured such endless bouts of rage, she could no longer think rationally, refusing all sage advice to instead make her way to Dragonstone, unaware her brother Aegon already took the fortress. Mm. Capturing the Queen and her son, Aegon the Younger was held hostage and forced to watch his mother, Queen Rhaenyra of the Black Faction, rightful heir to Viserys I, burned alive and eaten by the usurper's dragon, Sunfire. Having survived many injuries and won many battles throughout his life, Sunfire's wounds eventually grew worse and he passed away on Dragonstone. With the oh, Queen dead, you Aegon the Second returned to King's Landing and once again sat upon the Iron Throne, binding a city in chaos from rebels and traitors. Having lost control of the capital for a period known as the Moon of Three Kings, the Shepherd ruled his mob from the ruins of the Dragon Pit, while Tristane Truefire and Sir Perkin the Flea took the Red Keep. Then there was Gaiman Palehair, the five-year-old son of a prostitute, crowned king in a brothel atop Visenya's oh, Hill, yeah, claiming yeah, legitimacy yeah, yeah. as the bastard son of Aegon II. That was the kid that we With saw in season control, one. Gaiman Palehair issued numerous progressive decrees seeking to create equality between men and women. Yet these would-be rulers were soon swept aside by the armies of House Baratheon, which joined Aegon in the capital. Defeating all three pretenders, Tristane and the prostitute were executed, while Gaiman Palehair was spared and made a ward of House Targaryen. Mm. The Shepherd, who remained defiant until the end, was burned alive along with hundreds of his supporters. Though Rhaenyra was dead, Aegon set the Iron Throne, and a Baratheon army held the capital. Aegon II and the Green Faction somehow found themselves on the verge of total annihilation. In this final phase of the war, the North, Riverlands, Vale, and Iron Islands were firmly with the Blacks, while the Crownlands, Reach, and Westerlands were neutralized, leaving only the Stormlands and capital with Aegon II. Wow. Yet of all the enemies they were now facing, the most insurmountable was the Northern Army of Lord Craig and Stark, who finally finished gathering a massive host of up to 20,000 men to Yo, they wait the, to the end of the war to show up. On the younger. Joining his march to victory were the armies of the Vale, while the Riverland army, recently victorious in the Reach, were even closer, mere days away from King's Landing. Seeking to end the immediate threat, Lord Boros Baratheon led his army out of the capital and engaged the Riverlords in the Battle of the King's Road, but he greatly underestimated the young, highly capable enemy leaders like Lord Kermit Tully, Lord Benjicott Blackwood, 
and Lady Alison Blackwood, known collectively as the what? Lads, and their grizzled veteran warriors, dismissing them as boys and women, only to be soundly defeated. <laughs> Seeing the tide turn against I'll the love green, to see that. the Crown Lands continued so, to betray the Baratheon army as they attempted to retreat, leading to complete and total victory for the Blacks. A courageous warrior to the end, Boros slew a dozen knights, as well as the Lords Derry and Malister, before falling to Kermit Tully. Left with hey. no army at all, and the river lords only one day from the capital, Aegon II was finished, and the Greens defeated, but still, he refused to consider surrender. Mm. When Corlys Valerion, who was released from prison and named Master of Ships for the King, suggested Aegon join the Night's Watch, what? the King instead played his final hand by ordering his hostage, Aegon the Younger's ear cut off, so it could be sent to the Blacks as a warning that the boy would be killed if they moved on the capital. This would be the last order he ever gave, as Aegon II, usurper king of the Green Faction, was found dead sometime later, assassinated by poisoned wine. Hoping to avoid further bloodshed, Lord Corlys Valerion set about establishing peace before the enemy could arrive, crowning Rhaenyra's son Aegon III as king of Westeros, hoping this might end the civil war on satisfying terms for the approaching armies. But he was mistaken, as only Lord Craig and Stark of Winterfell held the power and authority to end this conflict, and he would allow no peace until his honor was satisfied. Mm. Though the lads of the Riverlands were happy to meet Corlys Valerion and accept an easy victory, they quickly fell in line behind Craig and Stark, both fearing his wrath and admiring his abilities as a warrior and leader, agreeing uh, to follow yeah, his command yeah, in how yeah. the war must proceed. Known as the Hour of the Wolf, Craig and Stark ruled as Hand of the King, making plans for his massive army to launch a campaign of vengeance against all those who defied Queen Rhaenyra, including the Stormlands, Reach, and Westerlands. He also imprisoned those suspected of murdering Aegon II without his authorization, ultimately calling for the execution of 22 prisoners, including Corlys Valerion. Yet while Craig and Stark oh! was ready to shed as much hey! blood as he deemed necessary, his harsher tendencies were slowly softened by Lady Alison Blackwood, who grew romantically involved with the Lord, offering sage advice that might spare Westeros further suffering. Falling in love with and marrying Lady Alison, Cregan agreed to forego his campaign of vengeance, spared the life of Corlys Valerion, and allowed most of the condemned to join the Night's Watch. Though the mm. King's Guard Giles Belgrave and Master of Whisperers Larys Strong chose death, and thus were yeah, personally executed by Lord Stark, wielding ice, the Valyrian steel ice. sword of his family. Okay, that, that was As another thing that Alison, pissed me off. Machinations led That's to not such destruction. Called, she went mad. So. Bro has ice, right? This is like what a hundred years in the past. This is a hundred years in the past, he right? The King's guard, Giles Belgrave. He has ice now, and that motherfucker, Tywin Lannister, melted ice to make a sword for that little bastard Joffrey. He got what he deserved. He deserved a more humiliating. He got no. Well, he died on the crapper like Elvis, but. He got what he deserved. Uh, what happened with Allison? She wasn't harmed. I don't think she ever got. I don't think she ever got killed. She she was she. I think she's still alive and well. She's just not a part of the fight anymore. So they stopped talking about her. Right. Absolutely. Grave and Master of Whisperers Larry Strong chose death and thus were personally executed by Look Lord Stark ice. wielding ice, that damn sword the steel sword of his Sheesh. family. As for Lady Alicent, whose machinations led to such oh, there we go right there. she went mad Allison. in captivity and eventually died, a sad, lonely wretch, haunted by the memories of all those she'd lost. That's the second unsatisfying death of this. She just dies lonely, sad, uh, uh, Kristen Cole dies in battle probably quickly. Uh, I don't like it. The foot rap is hilarious. I'm t like, why they do that, man? Like, that is funny. <laughs> All right, we almost done. We got two minutes left for the story. <laughs> Thus it was that the dance of the dragon civil war finally ended, leaving Aegon right. the third, the eleven year old son of Rhaenyra, as king Ooh, of Westeros. Okay, okay. So I thought that's how it, how this ended. Okay, I I, I didn't think that it, I remembered it right. So Aegon, which is uh Rhaena Rhaena Rhaenyra and da uh Damon's oldest son. 
and Aegon the second and his sister wife queen their only daughter they end up together at the end of this whole thing because he's little foot for a reason it's wild <laughs> yeah. though Craig and Stark was granted many rewards by the crown he refused to take a position on the regency council and only served as hand of the king for two weeks before returning to Winterfell leaving the southerners to their own affairs that sounds about After right two years of vicious fighting the lands of Westeros were utterly ravaged, losing many towns, castles, resources, and lives. Yeah. Yet perhaps the most impactful consequence of this terrible civil war came from the death of so many dragons and members of the royal family, which left House Targaryen's power and influence. Okay, so... Cannibal. Cannibal is alive, but we haven't even seen Cannibal in the show. I don't even think they're going to show Cannibal. Elena and Dr damn Dreamfire dog. I don't even think remember them saying anything about Gr Dreamfire. Grey goes, Maylis and Raina, Moon Dancer and Bela. Bela is still alive. I thought they said that they killed Bela. Jahara, Morning and Raina. Okay, so Raina, Raina is gonna get sheep stiller. She's smoking Adam or dead. Damn. Silverwing is alive, but Ulf is dead. Nettles is dead. They didn't say anything about Nettles dying. Sheep still is still alive, though. Location unknown. Aegon the third. Shit. Everybody got everybody dead. And I'm, uh, how do I get rid of the thing without it? Massively. No, it doesn't. Okay. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, everybody dead, basically. Except for Bay except for Bela and Raina, Jahara, which is the girl. Silverwing and Sheep still are the only uh dragons. Morning and Morning isn't even Morning hasn't even hatched yet on the show. And Cannibal, we haven't even seen on the show, which I don't even think is gonna be on the show. So damn reduced lessening further with each passing year until the dragons oh. entirely died out <laughs> allowing for the overthrow of their dynasty by king robert baratheon of the stormlands in 283 ac following the dance only four dragons survived two of which remained wild the rest of their lives while sheep stealer flew with nettles and played no more part in the affairs of westeros mm. that left mourning as the only dragon of house targaryen by the end of 131 ac with the king's half-sister reyna as their only dragon rider That was good, man. Yeah, shout out to Citizen X, man. Y'all subscribe to them because they got a lot more. They got a lot more stories, and they tell like a lot about the show. Like they they recently started doing stuff for uh, House of the Dragon, explaining. So yeah, it's this is really good. They actually have these break, broken up into smaller pieces, but I just I just played the full the full version, but um. Uh, yeah, man, that was good, y'all. I can't wait for them to. I can't wait for them to see the things that they change and how uh, the things that they don't change because I I need that I need that boy to get that sword in his other eye. That's what I really need. All of this because of Allison. At the end of the day, yes, like in the book, in the books, she was the orchestrator of it, but in the show. She was like, oh, he changed his mind. Bullshit. But yeah, all of this is because of Allison. Because she even exists. Because she went after the king and had, had his babies. Had he she just left him alone. None of this would have happened. But yeah, man, that was real, that was really good. And I can't I can't wait to forget this again. And then we do this again two years from now after season three. <laughs> But I know, I know, I know for a fact that they, they cut a lot of uh, some of the stuff, some of the details from the book. I think that was just an overarching storytelling that they did, which is cool with me. It's good for my ADHD because yeah. In the show, Otto forced her to marry. Yeah, you right. You right. And she couldn't say no because she's a woman, which is trash. 
But yeah, yeah, okay. So Christian Cole dies in battle. Allison dies old and lonely. Uh, Elena kills herself. That's that's I I didn't like that part. I didn't like that part. She did just like um, just like Tommy. I don't like it. And she was a child. On top of that, you're right. So yeah, man. Who else are the main characters? I don't think Damon is dead. Damon isn't dead at the end of the show. I wonder how they're going to do Nettles' story, though. That's what I want to know. I want to see how they do Nettles. Because, especially if, Net, like, a lot of what happens with her is because she was with Damon. Like, how's that going to work? How, like, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just... I'm just curious to see how they go with it and what they do. And if Starfire is actually Starfire, no, Starfire is a team Titan. Sunfire is actually dead. She go, she go eat. Her. <laughs> oh man. Okay. This is such a good, this is a really good story. I liked it. Uh, if y'all want to do some more of these, just let me know, man. We can do some more. I don't know what else they got on here, but we can find something else that they do on here. Um, Fallout. Hey, son. Hey. How you doing? Yeah. Good. That shirt's dirty. They can't see you. Ah, come on. Say hi, people. Hi, people. Hold on. You got to talk into the mic. Hi, big ball. <laughs> <laughs> it was. Uh, I can see. So, how old are you? How old are you? Uh, when did you turn five? Uh, I'm five. <laughs> you turned five two days ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I get to get to. Go ahead, tell people what you want to say. What, what, what you want? What you want to know? Uh, what do you want? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I, I, I'm almost done. Okay. Okay. All right. I'll be... mm. oh. Silly. Uh, yeah. It's never a dull moment over here, y'all. But um, but yeah, they oh, I forgot I'm not sharing this. I'm not sharing this screen with y'all. Um but yeah, they have they tell a lot of different stories on here. If y'all want to go through some more of these, just let me know. We can Dark Lord, Imperial, Sith, Imp- like Star Wars stuff, man. Y'all know y'all know I, I'm down for all of that. But yeah. Uh, but yo if you're still watching i definitely appreciate you please like comment and subscribe to this here channel hit the notification bell so you get notified whenever you upload and until next time people let's get something done